So now that we can get our values from our form, let's hook this up to our API. And what we'll do is we'll just go to our login form itself. And what we need to do is get our user store. So we've got access to our login method. And what we'll do is we'll say const root store equals use context. And we'll need to bring in the root store context. And then we'll say const login and just destructure the login method from the root store dot user store. And then what we can do is pass our values to our login method. So I'll swap the console.log for login. And we get a type error here saying that the argument of type any object is not assignable to parameter of type I user form values. So we'll need to give this a type and in the values we'll say it has a type of I user form values and that resolved that particular error. So let's go test our form to make sure this works and we can actually log in and see what we get back. And in fact let's make sure we are actually logging something back into the console so that we can see our servers returning the correct response. So I'm just going to open up the user store and what I want to do is just console.log the user that we get back from our server. And I'll just do this inside the user store after we've logged in. And let's head back and first of all let's test that the correct functionality works. And we know that we have a user called bob at test.com and I'll type in the password and click log in and we get an error. And this can come as a surprise because our user store, we didn't enable strict mode. We enabled strict mode on our activity store and not on our user store. However, the enforcement of strict mode is kind of a global setting. So if I go to my activity store, where we've got the configure enforce actions always, Whilst we set this inside our activity store, this actually applies it to everything that MobX touches. So what I'm going to do just for clarity is move this into the root store. And then what we'll need to do is adjust our user store to run any action that's inside an async method inside a, a running action method. So first of all, I'm just going to cut this from here and paste it into the root store for no other reason then it feels a bit clearer about what effects this has on our application. And let's see if we can get the import for this as well. And indeed I can. And I'll just go back to the activity store and just clean up a few things from here as well. And we don't need the configure in there either. So inside our root store, we've got our configure enforce action. So again, nothing has changed at this point but we were getting an error inside our user store. And remember that anything that occurs after an async action is equivalent to running a new expression inside a len statement inside a, a promise len chain. So what we need to do for our list user equals user, whenever we're setting an observable, this has to be run inside an action. And what we'll use is just the running action and I'll cut and paste list.user equals user. This does suggest that our method was working though because it was attempting to do this. But let's just go back and double check. And I'll say bob at test.com and capital P A dollar dollar W zero R D and click login. And we get our user back from the server, which is good. And what we should also do is redirect the user at this point to the activities page. And we will come on to doing that. But first of all, we want to get the functionality for this particular form working correctly. And supposing I put in a bad password, what would I get back then? Well, I get the request failed with status code 401. And whilst in here, we could display a toast and say invalid username or password. What we're going to be doing with this form is sticking it inside a modal and our toast won't display if we're inside a modal. So what we want to do is figure out how we can pass validation errors back to our form or any errors 
from our API and display them in our form so the user knows that something's gone wrong without having to exit the form so they can possibly try again. So what we'll take a look at next is how we can send our errors from our API all the way back to our form and display them inside our form as well. And we'll take a look at that next.